Hello, welcome to another one of our videos and today I'm going to be looking at elbow problems which is, I must admit, this is always quite a tricky one. I haven't done a lot of videos or on this before because it's just a, there's just so many things and it's usually more to do with the shoulder and in particular the scapula when we talk about elbow problems. So um, what I'm going to show you is a few different things that I might use. I don't use all of them with people. Sometimes it might be just one or two. Sometimes it might be the first one or and some other times it's the last one. Um, the thing is just to have a series of ways to test it and, and find out what's going to work the most effective for the person that you have or if it's yourself. So um, sometimes all of these I might use but just in various stages. So anyway this first one um, I'm just going to show you basic postural problems. So in the, the all fours position this and Dylan here is showing us like a person with a exaggerated kyphosis as such um, and then he what what we need to establish before we try and do anything for the elbow is where to position correctly so he's just trying to like go into extremes to then find where's the 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 normal place so um, so he, he wants to make sure the pelvis don't don't underestimate what happens at the pelvis if the pelvis is going into awful positions it ruins what happens up above and what if anything goes wrong around here you're going to have compensation to the elbow alright so a lot of people are just trying to treat the, the elbow and the forearm itself and completely ignoring where all the compensation is coming from alright so this first position is like um, uh, just an all fours and we're basically just going to go into a, he's going to show us in a second how he's just going to stretch out and then so in this what he's showing here actually is um, a wing scapula so it's this person who sort of sits in, into their scapula sort of sticking out at the back that's why it's called wings this person really needs to learn how to protract better um, they're, they're guaranteed to have a lot of problems at the elbow if they start doing excessive amount of champs so they need to protract as what you just saw Dylan there see how he's nice and flat so that's a good position for the scapula so he's getting um, what we call upward rotation on the scapula they're, they're beginning to reach around him and separate so they're basically pulling themselves apart, which we've seen in many of our other videos before on push-ups and stuff like that. So it's very important for this, the elbow here because the forearms are going to try and excessively rotate when the, the scapula ceases to move correctly. So if that's in the kneeling position, this is Nathan showing us in the standing position, and, and I'm just going to fast forward here. So he's basically, if I just go back, you can sort of see here that's a poor position that he stands in all right so we, we can sort of see that he's really hunched over and then as I come to the side you can like again it's probably a bit exaggerated but all I need him to do is to stand tall I don't need him to pull his shoulders back so they don't want to squeeze the shoulders just want him to stand tall um, and when I come to the front we're going to see the common mistake that we see with the uh, the hand sort of internally rotated now and it's just what you're seeing here what he's doing now this is an example of one person who a person who may develop a lot of elbow problems because these internal rotators of the shoulder so being the uh, the guys that are pulling those hands into that position the the pecs and the lats especially the pec minor and the lats there these guys are powerful internal rotators when they're doing too much of this, those forearms, uh, when they're going to actually try to counter it. If, if the rotator cuff is unable to do it, do so, and then you start doing lots of work with your hands, the, the, the scapula is sort of very restricted. So now the forearms are going to go into, they're the only guys left, they're going to go into excessive working. So, so in a good posture, we should see the thumbs pointing forward like Nathan's showing us here. And just standing in from the side on, now this is important when we come to the other exercises because you need to be able to get this right before you can do any of these things. So we want to sort of see his ear and his shoulder and his hip all dissect each other. All right, so, that's, so just remember that for all the exercises we're about to show you, if you don't get this part right, you'll just compensate around it and create more problems for the elbow. All right, so if we move on and we'll get uh, back to Dylan. Um, so he's going to show us a basic thoracic mobility exercise so again we see a lot of problems in the upper back that is restricting the scapula so thoracic if they if you have a rigid thoracic region thoracic spine 
you're really going to limit the ability of the scapula to, to guide the humerus, which is your arm bone, into positions that it needs to do for rotation, very similar to like the hip does for the knee. We sort of think about it like that. So the hip may not have any pain. You might have all the pain in the knee, but the hip is a real problem behind it. So if we firstly mobilize that thoracic region, and then we go into this deep stretch. So this is, again, where we're starting to learn how to stretch out through that, um, that scapular region. You can see how a lot of people feel this is a stretch for the lower back, but I'm really looking at it as learning how to get this upward rotation and giving the scapula the freedom so that the forearm doesn't feel like it needs to compensate when you start doing arm exercises. So quite a simple stretch, um, but can be very effective um, if used wisely with some of the other exercises we're about to do. And, and also, most importantly, you've got to also identify the one habit that you've, um, and you sort of see Dylan here showing us like a poor position on that, um, on this stretch. So if, if I go back, so that r depression of the scapula here, see that person who's doing this and unable to get into that, where they need that shoulders to sort of shrug right up. See that, that last bit here? We, we really need that. All right. And that's very important for the health of the shoulder and the scapula to learn how to move correctly with the other things. All right, so um, so if we come into the next thing, so that'll be my first sort of exercise that I'm doing, and this is learning really just good scapular placement. Then Nathan's going to show us um, his next exercise where we're going to go into a stabilising exercise. Actually, he's showing us the wrong one. Um, this is where we're going to do the wall slides. So basically what Dylan was doing, but standing up. Now this is where more stability is required. So Dylan didn't need any stability because he was on the floor and really he was just stretching and gaining mobility. This one now, because it's vertical, vertically challenged and there's gravity applied, the stabilizer muscles they actually have to do something. They have to lift his arms. All right, so this is where we've done a lot of this one in the past before with previous shoulder exercise videos. A very, a very old exercise one, so it's nothing new, but a great one for like treating the elbow at the source of the problem being the scapula. All right, so you can see here when he lifts off, that bit there is where we see posterior tilt of the scapula, and the first part of it when he was coming up, we saw upward rotation. Those are the two things so that where the scapula is doing exactly what it's meant to do and guiding that humeral head so it sits in the side of the socket as opposed to moving forward out of it and creating all sort of problems at the shoulder but also at the elbow um, as it has to learn to compensate to do the movements that, that it's unable to perform. All right, so uh, an excellent exercise. These first two exercises are probably the starting point for any of my anything that I have to do with the elbow so that I can guarantee the scapula starting to move like it's meant to. All right, so let's moving right on. So if I just go to back to Dylan, and this is where we start to look at some of the specific stretches for the forearm, because remember the forearm's trying to create either medial or lateral. So this first one's like the tennis elbow thing, which is the lateral epicondylitis. It's where the, the top part of the forearm's going to develop pain. And this is a stretch for that region. So, so he's sort of stretching the forearms at the front here and the elbow pain is usually on the top on the outside there. So this is what, uh, it's a little flex bar it's called. It's a little rubber thing and you can twist it. You can see how he can really torque it. Then the other one is, he, is he's gonna do the, the forearm stretch for the medial side. So firstly he gets it wrong and he starts flexing, but he needs to extend it. So the last one was the wrist going into flexion. This time it's going into extension. Um, so this is where a person has medial epicondyl, medial pain on the, on the elbow there. This can be a great stretch to sort of learn how to get it in the right position, but none of either of these two stretches work correctly if he doesn't have that good position. Remember we showed you at the beginning with Nathan. He needs to make sure before he does these stretches that he is in he is stabilizing his scapula in the right place. If that elbow, I mean if that shoulder starts moving around while he's trying to do these stretches, he's just going to exacerbate his problems, all right? So everything must be done in that perfect position. All right, so then Nathan's going to show us another one. 
he's going to show us a similar stretch, but we're going to use the wall. This one's actually very, very difficult, especially for the person with the medial problem. So all he's got to do is place one hand on the wall with the fingers pointing directly down. You see how that, especially that little finger, it's got to be dead vertical. And you've got to try and make sure that heel of the hand is pressed firmly against the wall. All right, you don't want any gap between the heel of the hand and the wall there at all. With the one arm, it's sort of fairly easy, but when, it's, when you place the other hand side by side, it, like as he's about to do now, is when you start to appreciate just one, how one arm might be the affected arm, just how quickly it loses its, its flexibility. In his case, it's this right arm. And the reason and the way I can tell is if I just come, come you'll see me place my finger underneath there. So right here, in this gap here, there's this, this hand just can't quite get the heel of the hand all the way to the wall. He only gets the outside of it, not the whole part. So, and where the other hand is flush against the wall. See how he just had to move that there? And it's really difficult for him to do so. This is a great stretch and almost a great test. All right. Um, again, the scapular placement's got to be in line with it. So you can't sort of move it out of position to do these stretches. All right. So then the next one. Um, so now we're going to, this is where the third one, you need a partner for this one. Um, and some therapists are good at doing this. So all Nathan's got to do is just maintain his hand in neutral. And Dylan just applies both his hands to his forearm there and pulls it, pulls it into um, one way. So he's going to go supination and then he's going to go pronation. So basically he's just guiding his forearm around while Nathan makes sure he keeps perfect shoulder stability. So it's always best to do this sitting down. Um, and you, what you're looking for is to keep the wrist flat. Don't necessarily look at the hand because the hand might be able to do a bit extra. It's the wrist. So try and look right at the wrist if it's dead flat. If it doesn't achieve all the way, then you know that there's a problem. So, so we go into supination and then, then the next one we'll go into is pronation. Um, and so Dylan's going to drive this around into the opposite direction. Um, just be careful of how much you, you, pressure you put on the person's hand, obviously. Um, so you can see Nathan here has no real problems with pronation, but he had some issue with supination. All right, And this is where the person with the lateral might feel the stretch here on this one. Again, remember, keep really good position at the scapula there all the time in the shoulder, so you're maintaining good posture so that it can't cheat around it. All right, So that's a good partner stretch you could use. So these are all sort of these first few things I've shown you besides the wall slides. They're all more based around mobility um, and basic stability. Now, now we sort of need to like work out how do we strengthen, um, how do we start to, to get it to move, because if we don't do that, we don't achieve anything. So this next one is where you use a hammer. And this is where we just go from pronation to supination. And again, uh, the shoulder position is important. You'll see Dylan starts this out with his arm too far away from him and I tell him okay bring it back and you'll see when I stand side on but basically he goes into supination then he moves into pronation and we've got to make sure that he doesn't try to move around the shoulder at all um, and you'll see there's a harder one we'll do in a second where Nathan does do that. Now you can see here how his elbow is too far away from his shoulder it's hard for him to be positioned correctly so I've, I quickly tell him get a little bit closer so you can, and you can see now that's a much better position for the shoulder. It's sort of sitting right in the side, the, the joint there, as opposed to before he was sort of moving forward a bit too much. So all he has to do is just move this hammer, which is a great little lever because it's like a sledgehammer for very small muscles. And it's surprisingly difficult and you'll feel a big stretch going through. So it's an eccentric stretch and then, it, and then uh, in both directions. So that'll be in the in the forearm on the on the medial side and this will be on the forearm on the on the top side. All right, and he's just going to try and move this right through. This is a great exercise to follow up after the last ones. All right, so that's a, that's our first one that we might try. Um, then we move into the next one, and this is where again you need a partner, and it's just a harder version, just using a stick, and the partner just applies resistance to the stick, and you know, and then you, basically Dylan's trying to just to stop Nathan from pronating and then he lets it go and take guides him into the full stretch. Nathan just resists it and you know and you you might just work on the side that's hardest 
and just ease off on the other one. And uh, again, the muscles aren't very strong around here. And and I'll say it again, everything you do at the shoulder here is the key. You've got to make sure that shoulder maintains position. You'll see when I come around behind Nathan on one of these reps here, how his arm tries to move away from him. He doesn't maintain that position. So you watch this. You'll just watch his elbow, how it moves out away. So his shoulder is trying to help his elbow rotate around where we really needed him to maintain and see how he's almost depressing a little bit we needed him to maintain a perfect position and not let that shoulder move at all while he's rotating his forearm all right that's the key watch how the elbow moves in see that all right so this is a really good exercise for Nathan to work on um, you'll have to really concentrate and Dylan might have to give him cues while he's doing it because he may not be aware of the compensation that's creeping in as he's doing the exercise all right um, so once you've done that then then we sort of move into some a bit more integrated a bit more strength and stability so far very simple stuff now he's Nathan's, Nathan's trying to just see if he can maintain good scapular stability under load so in a basic push-up position we're going into single arm and he's just having to maintain that perfect protraction of the scapula and definitely some strength required and you know this is where also the core is going to be brought into play for the first time so if there's any problems around the pelvis that might affect the upper body you'll start to see that here so if he can do this one easily then we move into a bit of a rotation one so combining rotation like we did with Dylan at the beginning so now he needs good stability in that left arm with good mobility in the thoracic region on the right hand side and you know we might do two three reps of each of these all right, um, and he will do both arms. And if we're sort of confident of that, we might look into push-ups and things, other things as well. Um, but there'll be a few other exercises that we might use, which I'll skip to with Dylan. So then we might look at the push and the pulling stuff. And I usually start with cables because it really, you can really get a lot of freedom through the movement without jamming up the rib cage again and making sure that scapula is really coming out in front. This is great for serratus anterior, these exercises, um, which is a key exercise for the scapula to function correctly. So we might start with pushing and then we might start with pulling. So the medial elbow pain people will have problems with pulling and the lateral ones will have problems with pushing. So that's where we might have to look at one more so than the other, depending on what type of elbow pain it is. But I, I really want to get to these ones without the forearm feeling like it needs to excessively grip all the time because that's what it's doing, that's why the pain is there. It's excessively working to make up for a weakness in the shoulder elsewhere. All right, so so there you go. So there's a lot of exercises you can try and they're sort of in, easy, in order from easiest to hardest and that's exactly how I would be testing them and working out where to stop. So wherever I find my limitations are is where I'll stop and that's what I'll do. All right, so... I apologise for the length of video, but as you can imagine, this is quite a tricky thing, subject to explain. Um, we might release a couple of other videos to go into more detail as well. All right, so um, I hope you've enjoyed that, and we'll see you on our next one.